Dandelings, welcome back to my channel. It's Madison here, or Dandelion. Today we are doing another deity spotlight. And as you can tell from the intro of this video, the deity we are spotlighting is the ancient Egyptian deity Thoth. And before we get into the video, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. And remember, you can hit that join button below this video to become a member of my channel and get access to members only perks. So the first thing that is important to mention about this deity is that Thoth is the Greek name for this deity. The Egyptian name, the true name of this deity is Jehudi. And Jehudi or Thoth is the ancient Egyptian deity of wisdom, writing, learning, teaching, also said to be advisor to the gods, an interpreter, advisor to specifically the sun god Re, or Ra, and also a deity of magic. And Jehudi is strongly associated with the moon. And the name Jehudi literally means he who is like the abyss. And that's a type of animal that we'll circle back to later. In one myth, Jehudi is said to have been created from the lips of Ra and is known as the god without a mother. In a different myth, Jehudi is said to have created himself, self-created, and as an abyss, which is a type of bird, he laid the cosmic egg, which was the original source of all creation. So a very important deity, a very strong, impactful, and powerful deity. And to share some more stories, some more myths about Jehudi, during Isis's pregnancy with Horus, Jehudi protected Isis from Set. And later on in Horus's life, Jehudi healed Horus's eye, which had been damaged by Set. And here is a myth about Jehudi being an advisor and a mediator. Ra had cursed his daughter, Nut, forbidding her from giving birth to a child any day of the year. Nut went to Jehudi for help, and Jehudi gambled with the moon to get some of the moon's light, and he managed to get this fraction that I'm not going to attempt to figure out how to say properly. <laughs> um, he got that fraction of the moon's light. He gambled it away from the moon. And this amount of light was enough for five more days in the calendar, which allows Nut to have a child on the one of those five days. She can give birth. And this is also the story of how the calendar year got extended from 360 days to 365 days. And Giles is here, it took him long enough. And when Isis brings her husband Osiris back to life, and if you wanna hear more about that myth and more about Isis, you can check out my video on Isis. Yes, hello, sir. When Isis brings Osiris back to life, Jehudi is the one who gives Isis the words to do so. There is another story where Tefnut, the goddess of rain and moisture, had fled Egypt after becoming estranged from her father, Ra. Ra sent Jehudi and Shu, which was Tefnut's husband and a messenger of the gods. Ra sent them to bring Tefnut back, and he disguised them as baboons, which baboons are another animal, along with the abyss, that Jehudi is strongly associated with. They persuaded Tefnut to come home, and the rain and the moisture returned to Egypt. Jehudi is also said to be a big part of the afterlife and the entrance into the afterlife in ancient Egyptian mythology. It's said that Jehudi provides a safe place after a soul has died, where he provides a place for souls to rest. He sells spells and things that will help them to move through the afterlife and protect them against the demons that they'll encounter. And Jehudi's magic is also said to be a big part of the process that the soul goes through, according to ancient Egyptians, in the afterlife when the soul is reborn, when the soul is brought back to life in the underworld. Jehudi is also the deity during the weighing of the heart ceremony that records the findings of that weighing of the heart. So when you get to that place and it's time to weigh your heart after you've died, Jehudi is the one who records the findings and then reports them back to Osiris. So like we said, Jehudi is associated with baboons and it, the abyss. An abyss is a type of bird, and usually Jehudi is depicted as sometimes a baboon, but usually you'll see Jehudi depicted as a human man with the head of an abyss. There are cemeteries in Egypt where there are thousands of mummified baboons 
as offering to Jehudi. And the Greek equivalent of Jehudi is the god Hermes, if you're looking to connect the two pantheons. The Greek refer to Jehudi as Thoth the Thrice Great. And statues of Jehudi are usually green or blue or both. These colors symbolize wisdom, the heavens, and also protection. So the type of work that is good to do with Jehudi, you can probably figure it out just from everything that I've already said, but anything having to do with communication, writing, um, interpreting things, being a kind of messenger or an interpreter between people, a mediator, anything like that is really great to work with Jehudi on. And afterlife work, death work as well. Jehudi also helps me a lot in my practice with teaching and with learning. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you soon. Blessed be. And my Jehudi altar is actually right here.